前進カメンライダー・ギーツ is currently airing in Japan and fans across the world are being swept away by its striking imagery, exciting choreography and enthralling premise. As of this video, we're only five episodes in and things are already shaping up to be this year's highlights. I was compiling footage for a video on my thoughts of the season so far, and as I was going through my footage, I noticed something funny about episodes three and four that I thought would make for a fun separate video. Hours of frame by frame research and way too much math later, I've come up with some data and stats that I think we'll have a fun laugh looking over. So without further ado, who actually scored more points in Kamen Rider Geet's Zombie Survival? Before I begin, I should probably give a brief synopsis of the story as we know it so far in Kamen Rider Geet's. Basically, the world is under attack from monsters, which we call Jamato. The only way to save humanity is by completing the Desire Grand Prix, a tournament that pits warriors called Kamen Riders against each other for the grand prize of a single wish. To decide the victor, riders compete in game modes like Scavenger Hunt and the topic of this video, Zombie Survival. In this scene, the Desire Grand Prix moderator, Surumi, explains how the zombie game mode works. The zombies will spawn in three waves, each wave having more zombies than the last. If the zombies get into the city, an outbreak occurs, which I assume is like a sort of disaster scenario where every common Rider loses. It isn't about who kills the most zombies. The winner is decided by whoever has the most points based on how they deal with the zombies. For example, if you look at the scoreboard, and translate it into a language you can understand if you don't read Japanese, kills net the player 1,000 points, headshots are worth 200 points, and attacking other players loses you 2,000 points. If you're the player with the lowest score by the end of the third wave, you're disqualified. Just like Surumi says, Meaning, being bitten causes you to become a zombie. After learning the rules, our heroes and villains are dropped into the play area and begin fighting wave one. Now, if we refer to the scoreboard that was presented to us earlier, you'll see a few values that I think are really worth highlighting while we're taking numbers. Headshot. A classic accolade in gaming, especially in the zombie genre. Given how low the point value is on just getting a headshot, I think you can stack multiple bonuses on top of the generic kill, so that's how I'll handle the scoring so far. Revolve Change The gimmick of the entire season is strangely worth a pitiful amount of points. Although I guess that makes sense. Imagine just hiding in a corner where no one can see you and just revolve changing until you have the highest score. Point Blank Point Blank is interesting. Since there are players who have weapons that are long range and players who have weapons that are short range, I think it's odd that they would make a bonus specifically for the people who are up close and personal with the zombies when they kill them. But I guess that is the most dangerous position you could be, so I guess it rewards riskier gameplay. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool bonus. Two combo and three combo. Off the top of my head, I think I can assume what they mean. I, I kind of assume that it means killing three different zombies at once or two different zombies at once. You could interpret it as maybe doing two hits to a zombie and then killing it or three hits to a zombie and then killing it. I don't blame you for considering that, but I'm going to be choosing the former for my scoring process. Special combo move. This is the last of the combo bonuses. I'm pretty sure this is just referring to when a rider uses the charge or break or finisher of some kind with their weapon or belt of choice. If you want a lot of points, I recommend fishing for that special move combo. The rest of the bonuses are pretty self-explanatory, but when we look at the penalties, things get a little more ambiguous. Overkill. I do not understand this one. I would describe most things in Kamen Rider to be Overkill? Maybe that's just me, but Overkill kind of sounds like a main component of stuff Kamen Rider does. Leaving the area. Once the play area is defined, it seems like no one can really break through it. No one can really pass beyond the boundaries, and plus, there's not really a reason to, so I don't really understand. Attacking other players. I get why they have this here, so that you're just not whooping everyone else's butt so that you can get all the points, but I like that they have it as one of the penalties, almost like they want you to find a way to work together or work in teams. 
Sabotage. We'll get back to this one. We're not gonna talk about it much now, but remember, Sabotage. Now that we're a little more familiar with the scoreboard and all of the bonuses and penalties, let's apply what we learned and tally up everyone's on-screen score wave by wave. But before that, you may have put together your own strategy for winning this round of the Desire Grand Prix based on all the bonuses. If you've got a plan, leave it in the comments right now, and let's see who thinks they have the best strategy. Beginning round one in episode three, the first zombie we see get killed is by Common Rider Buffa, which means it's quiz time. How many points would Common Rider Buffa get for killing this zombie? The answer, from my calculations, I'm seeing 1,000 points for a kill, 1,000 for using a special move, 200 for being the first zombie killed, 500 for killing the zombie in one hit, 400 for taking no damage, and possibly 400 for killing the zombie point blank. Overall, leading to a tally of 3,500 points for one zombie. When you put the numbers on the table, it really shows just how much more experience Buffa and eventually we'll see Geats have compared to the other riders. That, or the whole scoreboard is just nonsense. And there's no way that that could be true. <sighs> there's no way. An interesting clue for solving the mystery of everyone's score is whenever you get a shot from the point of view of a rider. In their heads up display, we see a health meter, shields, and then a bunch of other numbers and a bunch of other little details. But what I'm focused on is the stuff on the right side. At the top right, we can see the rider's current score. And on the bottom right, we see a sort of live update screen that tells the player tips about the round and what bonuses they've got. When we see through Kamen Rider Nago's visor, we see that Geats helping her kill one zombie is worth 2,000 points. And on the bottom right, it says the kill is worth 1,000 points, but that also Geats helping is worth 1,000 points. It also mentions that Nago struck the enemy in a weak spot, which I guess means the head, but without a point value assigned to it, it just leaves me confused since it's not a headshot. When we see Kamen Rider Depan's score through his visor, by the way, remember that we're looking through his visor. I'll talk about that later. We watch him presumably kill, maybe assist Geats in killing a zombie? He doesn't earn any points for it though. Is that because it's considered overkill? Again, we'll get back to this. After some developments in the first wave of zombies, we get a peek at everyone's score, and wow, those are some huge numbers. But if we look at Geats' score, for example, the writers did a pretty good job of keeping his score pretty believable overall. In round one alone, we see Geats assist Nago in killing a zombie. That's 100 points for an assist. Then we watch him use the water buckle to flood a room and kill around 13 zombies at once with a special move. Tallied up, that's 31,200 points. If we're counting two and three combos, then that brings Geet's on-screen score to around 33,000 points. That's only about nine zombies shy of the score we see on the leaderboard at the end of round one. When we look at everyone else's score on the leaderboards though, things start to fall apart in round one. Take Nago for example. When her and Geet start fighting together, she doesn't technically do anything worth any points other than maybe assisting Geets. Plus, we see through her visor that she has points before she presumably kills her first zombie? I wonder if the writers thought giving her four digit number for her final score in wave one would look kinda weird, so they gave her extra points just to be safe. But if we're gonna talk about weird looking scores, by the end of episode three, Common Rider Mary has clocked in zero points of on-screen action, and yet has any score to speak of at all. We see how good of a fighter Mary is at this point in the story in episode four, and it takes him like three minutes to kill two zombies with a shield, his only weapon at the time. Common Rider Mary is cheating. Does he know? After falling behind in wave two, Dapan tricks Nago into following him into a trap where Dapan double crosses her, shooting her in the back, resulting in a deduction of 2,000 points from his score. We see clearly that Dapan loses points for shooting Nago. But when Geats comes in and deflects the shot to protect Nago, there isn't a penalty noise. And when Geats dodges a shot from Japan while they're fighting, makes no contact with the shot at all, there's a penalty noise. 
Once we go outside and do a 1v1 with Geats and Depan, shots that miss Geats don't have the penalty noise. But whatever. After Geats defeats Depan, everyone wonders why he didn't get any penalties for fighting back. And it's revealed that Depan was infected by a zombie. And zombies are fair game for players. Also remember this. We'll get back to this plot point soon. At the end of Wave 2, also in Episode 3, I did a rough estimate of everyone's last seen score and added up their on-screen score tally. Here are my results for that. If you've watched Episode 4 already, one of these numbers stands out. Can you guess which? Other than that, these scores are probably all pretty off base from what they actually should be, considering the differences in Wave 1 scores, but what about the third wave? Between waves two and three, we learn that not only Depan got infected, but Nago as well. While some players attempt to restrain the infected, Kamen Rider Tycoon shoves Buffa into a wall and gets penalized 2,000 points for attacking another player. A nice detail. Now that our heroes know there are infected riders in their ranks, everyone refocuses for the final wave to take back the lead. Once wave three begins, we start on a shot of what I counted to be around 80 zombies, and I counted a few freaking times. Feel free to triple check me, but I counted so many times. Fun fact, by the end of the episode, we actually see close to 80 zombies killed, which is kind of neat that they kept that little consistency in the numbers. I tallied all the points here too, but they're not too important, so I'll focus on a few highlights first, and then there's something else I want to touch on before we wrap the video up. Geats and Tycoon open the wave by killing 8 zombies off the bat. No damage, one shots, assists, around 8,000 points for each of them. We watch Mary set up a hostage rescue for extra points, and after killing his opponents, he's attacked and bitten by an almost fully zombified Depan. The act of being a zombie and biting a non-infected, something that feels like a zombie objective, like when you're a zombie, the only thing you're able to do, counts as attacking another player and loses Depan 2,000 points. After seeing her soon-to-be fate, Nago henshins and starts racking up points quickly. Killing the zombies we see around her, she gets approximately 12,700 points in a snap. After some renewed spirit, Nago dons the Boost Buckle, a special power item that gives you insane amounts of power and speed. She knocks down 14 zombies, each in one shot, for around 23,300 points. But after becoming weak from her infection and a little assist from Geats, she does a revolve change for a big finisher. In this special move, I added up around 30 zombies on either side of Nago that get killed in one hit. Running the numbers and racking them up, in one wave we watch Nago get 105,700 points. I'll say it again, 105,700 points. When we look at the actual final scores for the entire game mode on the leaderboards, that firmly puts her in the top three. All right, let's wrap this up. Time for the final scores and on-screen scores we see for zombie survival. In first place, we see Geats with 180,600. Second place is Buffa with 136,800. Third place is Tycoon with 92,200. Fourth place is Mary with 85,400. Fifth place is Nago with 58,400. And sixth place, Getting disqualified is Japan with 56,600 points. However, with their on-screen scores, the actual ranking of zombie survival goes like this. In last place with the disqualification is Japan with 700 points. Yes, 700 points. The math is correct. He lost almost all of his points. If we didn't add up the two and three combos, then he would not have gotten any points. He almost got negative points. Japan definitely gets disqualified. In fifth place, we have Mary with 8,800 points. We don't actually see him kill anything. We see him kill two zombies off screen and he beats up another zombie with the shield, but it doesn't really look like he's killing any. So the only time we see him do anything, that's how many points he gets. 
Fourth place goes to Kamen Rider Tycoon with 15,700 points. I didn't mention this before, but in Wave 1, Tycoon actually saves three civilians, scoring him three rescue points. It's just not important overall, though. He gets fourth place. In third place, we have Kamen Rider Buffa, 25,400 points. Not bad, not bad, pretty big numbers, and overall we saw some pretty big scoring kills from him. In second place, with a surprise finish, Kamen Rider Geeks, with 73,600 points. Which means, first place goes to Kamen Rider Nago, with 112,300 points. But what if the rules are all just busted? Exhibit A. One of the cool parts about the final scores is that if you look at Nago and Depan's scores, there's only a difference of about 1,800 points. Meaning that when Depan attacked Mary in Wave 3 and lost 2,000 points, that's what caused him to lose in the end, right? Wrong. Remember when I said, through his visor, by the way, remember that we're looking through his visor. I'll talk about that later. In that scene, we also see Depan's score in his HUD. That's how I know for sure his final score when I tallied up the Wave 2 leaderboard. But does this number look familiar? Out of all the Wave 2 scores, this number should look familiar. It's Depan's score after Wave 3. Since he didn't have a weapon during the third wave, he just wandered around as a zombie and tried to bother the other riders. But when he attacked Mary, he was penalized 2,000 points, which ultimately is not reflected on the leaderboard. Exhibit B. If Depan was infected during wave two, how come he can't attack other players without a penalty? It's just openly accepted that being a zombie in this mode sucks. And if you're a zombie, you're doomed to just lose points. I know that for Depan specifically, Kanato Sumida just has a bleak outlook on humanity and decides to just give up on being a human. But it seems a bit backwards to not give infected players an option other than just killing more zombies while being infected. We also find out that being infected means zombies won't target you. But if you're infected, you still can do roughly the same amount of stuff as when you weren't infected, so what's the point of being infected? If zombies won't attack you while you're infected, that sounds like a buff. Exhibit C. We already lightly touched on when Nago gets help from Geats and we see through her POV. But the other time we see through someone's POV is Depan's. And other than his score being the same from Wave 3, he also doesn't get any points for presumably killing this zombie right here. Maybe Geats already killed it by kicking it at him? But if you shoot at a corpse that someone already killed and vaporize it with your laser pistol, shouldn't that kind of count as overkill? And speaking of overkill... Exhibit D. Overkill and Sabotage make no sense, other than the fact that common Riders love Overkill. We see a few pretty egregious examples of Overkill in these two episodes, and not once is the penalty given to anyone. Sabotage is equally confusing, and we see a few prime examples of Sabotage as well. Japan literally sabotages Nago in Wave 2, Wave 3, Depan sabotages everyone by becoming a full zombie. Buffa and Depan have an entire secret plan that I didn't even talk about, where the two of them collude to take down Geats by giving Buffa a stronger buckle. All I'm saying is, they should have their trigger finger on the penalty button all the frickin' time. In the end, Depan gets ejected from the game for having the lowest score. And even if they had kept to their scoreboard in the writer's room, I don't think it would have changed just how much fun these two episodes were. Numbers aside, the high stakes being exemplified, rad VFX design, and the story amplifications for the world and characters on display are strong for the first few episodes of the season. It's a show about battle royales and trickery, so it makes sense that the rules are kind of wonky. It's probably a rigged game. Anyways, I don't want to be too serious about this. I hope this goofy rant wasn't too negative sounding. I'm a big advocate for speaking good on the things you love, and this season is no different. I'm just poking fun at a show that's brought me so much joy in the past few years. Geats is a great season of Kamen Rider to check out, and if you want to catch up on the past few episodes to keep up with the community, Google it! 
this video was entertaining, enlightening, or absurd, give it a like, favorite, or leave a comment about how I made you feel. Don't forget to subscribe too. If you like what you see, there's definitely more on the way. Goodbye for now. Ciao.